Exploratory data analysis is one of the most crucial steps in data analysis. It involves examining the data to find patterns, understanding the relationship between data variables, detect outliers, and gain insights. Data scientists normally spend a good amount of time understanding the data through EDA. Now, EDA can be a time-consuming process. Automating EDA can save significant amount of time and effort spent on repetitive tasks like data visualization, data cleaning, and basic statistical analysis. It also helps reduce uh, manual error which happens during the coding. Due to these benefits, I decided to build an app to automate EDA process to some extent. It can't be totally automated as it is a bit of a creative process. So in this video, I will explain how to build a Python web app to automate EDA process. We'll be using Python library Streamlit for designing an app and other libraries like Pandas, Matplotlib, Bokeh and Missingno for creating data visualizations. Alright, so that was a small introduction. Now before we move to coding part, let me show you how our final app will look like. Okay, so as you can see, I have launched our app in the web browser. And as you can see, currently it has just one widget, which let us upload a CSV file. So what I will do, I will upload a sample CSV file over here and then it will show a list of charts. So let me do that. So I have saved a dataset name wine.csv which is available from uh, scikit-learn so let me load it so as you can see as i upload the data set we can see our web app below so it has three tabs so first is the data set overviews second is individual column states and third is explore relationship between features so in the first tab we display the original data set which in our case is a wine data set available from python library scikit-learn and dataset has information about various ingredients used in creation of three different types of wines. So over here, as you can see, alcohol, malic acid, ash, etc. are various ingredients. And wine type is a type of a wine. So it's a categorical column. And all other columns are continuous columns. Next, we have an overview of the dataset. So it shows the number of rows, number of duplicates, number of features, the categorical columns count continuous columns count and it also displays which columns are categorical and which columns are continuous columns next we display the correlation chart so that can be used to understand the correlationship between various columns of our data set so as you can see this is the correlation chart below that i have a missing values distribution so this is a bar chart and it shows the missing values for each column of our data set in current uh, chart or as you can see for our current data set we don't have any missing values so the 178 is the total count of uh, the rows of the data set and that is same for all the columns if there are some missing values then this count will be less compared to other columns okay so that was the data overview next which any tab we have is the individual column states so over here we can understand individual column so over here i have what two sections one is to understand continuous feature and one is for categorical columns so in case of uh, continuous features we can select various features from here which are continuous and once we select the feature it will show the count of that feature miss missing count so how many values are missing the mean of that column standard deviation minimum value maximum values and quantiles and below that we have a histogram of uh, that column so how values are distributed yeah and then we can understand the categorical columns so we can select the category columns from this uh, drop down and once we select that uh, categorical column below we will be shown the distribute distribution of uh, values of that column so in our case we have three uh, three values for wine type column class 0 class 1 and class 2 and we can see that for class 0 we have 59 entries class 1 we have 71 entries and class 2 we have a 48 entries so that can be used to understand distribution of categorical features and then i have explore relation between features column or tab over here what i can do i can select the x and y axis so this will be the continuous column so i can select various columns so let me do that so as you can see as i selected ash versus malic acid over here it shows the relationship between the two and then in order to color encode so we might want to see 
how the categorical column is impacting this particular combination so we can select the categorical column through this drop down color and code and as you can see over here we can see the relationship between s versus malic acid and points are colored based on a categorical column wine type values class 0 class 1 and class 2 all right so that's a small web app that uh, we'll be creating in this tutorial without further delay let's get started with the coding part okay so as you can see on my screen i have launched visual studio core editor where i have kept the code for our web app so i have created a file name python underscore eda underscore app dot pi where i i have kept the code of our web app so let me explain you the code of our web app so at the beginning i have a few imports the imported streamlit pandas numpies and then there are data visualization libraries matplotlib pandas bokeh and missing no so pandas bokeh is a wrapper around pandas and bokeh that let us create a bokeh charts from pandas data frame with one line of code and missing no is another library that uh, let us create uh, charts about uh, missing data so feel free to check our website if you are interested in learning about missing no so then we have a few functions as you can see so first function is uh, create correlation chart so this function takes as input correlation data frame so we can create a correlation data frame by calling corr core function on our original data frame and that data frame we need to give to this function so this function using uh, matplotlib to create uh, this uh, correlation chart uses im show function as you can see then in the next uh, function i am creating charts for missing values so i am giving the original data frame to this uh, function and then we are using uh, missing no library and calling a bar method of it giving it our original data frame so this will create a bar chart which we displayed about the missing values so count of missing values we can see over there then i have another function name find cat count columns so this function will be used to find categorical and continuous columns of our data set so i give this function our original data frame as input and then there are two lists continuous columns and categorical columns so we look through each columns of our data frame and we check if the columns unique values are less than or equal to 25 so there are less than 25 unique values or if the columns type is a string or object so that will be a categorical column else the column will be continuous column so that's how we uh, divide the columns of our data set into continuous columns and categorical columns now this uh, count i have set over here of 25 uh, it is for uh, explanation purpose only but uh, because in real life situations uh, there can be many different values in categorical columns more than 25 so you can change this account as you feel right all right so from next line the code of our app starts so first of all what i have done i have called a set page config function on streamlit so this will be used to set the title of the tab in which the web web app gets displayed and i have also set icon so I have set bar chart as icon. So in Streamlit, you can provide various emojis by putting them in the columns, as you can see over here. And then you need to specify the name of that emoji. And then in the next line, I have created a file uploader widget, which can be used to upload file. And as of now, we are only accepting CSV files, but this can be extended to accept other types of files as well so whatever file we upload will be available in this variable upload as a bytes so next is the if condition so if some file is uploaded then we display our web app so various charts otherwise nothing will be displayed only the widget will be displayed so if upload is there so if there is some file uploaded then we convert that byte to data frame first and after converting it to data frame we retrieve the categorical columns and continuous columns as you can see over here and then we create the three tab so the first tab as i uh, explained earlier was the data set overview tab second was the individual column states and third, third was the explore relationship between features 
So we can call this function tap on streamlit and we can give it a list of strings specifying the tab names and it will return us uh, three tab objects and these three tab objects can be used as a context manager and python with statements as you can see i am calling over here with tab one now whatever code i write below in this context will go to first tab so i can include charts and headers and all that over here so first of all i have included a simple subheader which is data set so we will display our data set first this subheader function creates the h2 tag or h2 header of html if you are aware of html h2 header tag and then i am calling st dot write over here as you can see and we are giving it our original data frame so what this will do is that this will create a table in the web app which will display our data set then i am again calling a subheader function to add a second title which is data set overview and then i am displaying the few data set states like number of rows duplicates number of features categorical columns continuous columns counts and so on so for that i am using a markdown function so if you are aware of uh, jupyter notebook then you will be already aware of uh, markdown so it's a language to create a formatted text so over here i am just uh, adding a few rows to explain about like overview of the data set okay so the next is i am again adding another subheader so the correlation chart in order to calculate uh, create a correlation chart first of all i have calculated correlation data frame so to for that i have given continuous columns to our data frame and then called for function on it so once we have a core df uh, data frame ready we call this function create correlation chart and give it this data frame and it will return a score correlation figure which is a matplotlib figure and in order to display this matplotlib figure in our web app we need to use this function name pyplot and give it the figure and then i have provided a parameter name use container with and i have set it to true so what this will do is that it will expand and shrink the chart based on the width of the container and then in the next line i have again added a subheader for missing values distribution and i have created a missing values the chart by calling create missing values bar function giving it our original data frame and it will return me a matplotlib figure of missing values and then i am displaying it in the next line okay then we have a code for second tab so i am again using tab to object as a context manager so whatever i write over here will go into second tab so first of all i am calling a describe function on our pandas data frame so it will return me another data frame df describe so over here i have information about various column basic statistics like uh, minimum value maximum value mean standard deviation and so on so first of all i am adding a subheader for this tab analyze individual feature distribution and then i am adding a markdown for uh, continuous features so first of all i have created a drop down over here select box as you can see select box function is uh, used to create a drop down and i am giving it continuous column so options will be continuous column and by default the first value from this list will be selected and then i am displaying few statistics about that column so i am counting the number of nans and then i am displaying the counts of that column missing count mean standard deviation minimum maximum and quantiles so all these values come from this df describe data frame that we created earlier and then after writing these states we are creating a histogram so to create a histogram i am calling this uh, plot bokeh dot hist function so it will create a histogram using bokeh from pandas data frame so for y axis we are giving feature so this feature is a selected value from drop down and then it will create a hist figure which is a bokeh figure and in order to add a bokeh chart into our web app we will use streamlit.bokehchart function so for bokeh there is a different function and we will give it our hist figure which is a figure of our bokeh chart 
next uh, we have a code for uh, understanding categorical columns so i have added a simple header understand categorical features and then again i have a drop down to select categorical columns so i have used select box to create this drop down and options are cat columns which is categorical columns and by default the first column from that list will be selected and then over here i have created a data frame which has uh, counts of values of that column so the counts of unique values of that columns and once i have df counts uh, present in this data frame i'm calling plot bouquet dot bar method so it will be used to create a bar chart of count of uh, individual values of that categorical column so for x-axis i am giving type so type can be like for our case it was uh, class 0 class 1 and class 2 and values will be count of that uh, column values like what is the count for class 0 class 1 and class 2 so that's uh, another bar figure and it's a bouquet chart so then we will display it using st dot bouquet chart function so that was the second tab okay so then i have code for a third tab to explore the relationship between features so i have again used tab tree object as a context manager and first of all i have included a subheader to explore the relationship between features and then i have created a two columns so this st dot columns function accepts integer and over here i have create give it a value of two what it will does do is that uh, it will divide the horizontal space into two vertical columns so in the first column we will include the first drop down and in the second column we will include the second drop down for y axis so we can use this call objects column objects as a context manager just like we use tab objects as context manager and whatever we write below this column objects in this context manager will be included in that column so over here i am creating a first drop down select box and over here i am giving uh, options as a uh, continuous columns so the first value from that uh, continuous columns will be selected for x axis and same i am doing from y axis or y axis the second column will be selected by default and then i am creating another drop down using select box so this is the drop down of uh, categorical columns so this is a drop down to color the points of this scatter chart based on the values of categorical column so once these three drop down values are selected i am calling a plot bouquet dot scatter function on our original data frame and i am passing it x axis y axis values for showing the relationship between x axis column and y axis column and then for category if any value is selected from drop down then we color the points of the chart based on that selected column values so what this will do this will return a nuster figure so this is again a bouquet figure so we will display it uh, using st dot bouquet chart okay so that was the code for our app as you can see we were able to create this app in around 116 lines so as you can see 116 lines is not that much of a code to create a web app like this or exploratory data analysis and the web app is available from this url automate-eda.streamlead.app so feel free to explore the web app and yeah if you have any doubt or any question then please feel free to let me know in the comment section and if you liked our video and you feel that you learned something new today then give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and see you next time